Be sure to check out Rob Plays. There you can hang out with me while we play video games and talk about life stuff. So with Suicide Squad being released in theaters this week, what I wanted to do here is take a look at the many weapons and gadgets that the Joker's employed over his long history in comics, film, and television. And what I'm hoping is that by the end of this video, you'll come away with a better understanding of the Joker's arsenal in time for the Suicide Squad film. So due to the fact that he has no superhuman abilities, the Joker relies on a variety of weapons and gadgetry to take down his enemies. And while the Joker does use conventional weapons such as guns and knives, the main focus of our discussion today is going to be on the weapons that are unique to him. One of the Joker's most well-known and most often used weapons is the Joker Venom and first appeared in Batman issue number one. Joker Venom is a toxin that can exist in both gas or liquid form, and the effects of Joker Venom vary from story to story. However, in almost every case, those who are exposed to the Venom suffer from compulsive and uncontrollable fits of laughter and see their faces contorted into an exaggerated smile. In addition to this, Joker Venom comes in both lethal and non-lethal forms and has been administered through a variety of delivery systems, such as being shot from a gas gun in its first appearance, to being stored in the Joker's lapel flower, and even being poured in Gotham's water system in Detective Comics number 475, resulting in the creation of Jokerfish, which bore the Joker's signature grin. Now the story of the Joker Venom's creation has multiple versions. Detective Comics number 168 and Alan Moore's Killing Joe graphic novel credit the Joker himself with the Venom's creation due to his past as a chemical plant worker, while in Batman Legends of the Dark Knight number 50, the credit goes to the Joker's autistic cousin Melvin, a chemistry savant, that the Joker tricks into creating the compound. In addition to its many comic book appearances, the Joker Venom also appears in the 1989 Tim Burton film as Smilex, a chemical of the Joker's creation administered through various hygiene products in gas-filled balloons, as well as in Batman the Animated Series and the Arkham Knight video game. Now, a different version of the Joker Venom was seen in the 2001 miniseries Joker's Last Laugh by Chuck Dixon and Robert Beatty. Instead of killing those who came into contact with it, it transformed them into facsimiles of the Joker, complete with white skin, green hair, and permanent exaggerated grins. In addition to physical transformation, those who came into contact with the Venom were completely subservient and obedient to the Joker. And in Batman No. 663, writer Grant Morrison revealed that the Joker's consumption of the Joker Venom over the years had made him immune to its effects. Also making their debut in Batman No. 1 were various other weapons including a pair of exploding chattering teeth and playing cards with razor sharp edges that can be thrown similarly to Batman's batarangs and Joker's lapel flower which has at various times squirted Joker venom, laughing gas, poison, or water. Another of Joker's most frequent used weapons is his electric joy buzzer, a device Joker conceals in the palm of his hand so that he can administer an electric shock to anyone that he shakes hands with. This device made its appearance in Batman number 73 in 1952 in a story called Joker's Utility Belt in an attempt to rival that of Batman's. Also included in the utility belt were items such as exploding cigarettes, sneezing powder, itching powder, snake pellets, playing cards, Mexican jumping beans, <laughs> and several other seemingly innocuous prank gadgets. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I had to laugh. <laughs> Although so <laughs> I really want to see Batman <laughs> having Mexican jumping beans thrown at him. <laughs> this needs to happen in a movie. <laughs> Although sometimes using the joy buzzer to simply incapacitate his victims, Joker most often uses it as a means of murder, holding onto his victim's hand long enough for the electrical current to stop their heart. A version of the buzzer also appears in the 1989 Batman film, which leaves Joker's victim a charred, smoldering corpse. Another common weapon of the Joker's is a harpoon flag gun. Bearing the appearance of a regular pistol, when the trigger is pulled, the gun discharges a flag with the word bang or pow printed on it, giving those at whom the gun is fired at the impression that the gun is simply a practical joke. When the trigger is pulled a second time, however, the gun fires a flag itself from the barrel, which impales the victim like a harpoon. Now from time to time, the Joker is depicted wielding a cane. In 1991, we learn that another one of the Joker's weapons is a sword concealed within his cane that he uses to battle Tim Drake and Chuck Dixon's Robin 2 Joker's Wild miniseries. Another of Joker's weapons comes in the form of a boxing glove attached to an extendable arm that he uses to punch enemies. This weapon is sometimes attached to a gun and activates when the trigger's pulled. The Joker uses this weapon in the 1989 Batman movie, as well as the 2004 animated series, The Batman. The Joker's also expanded his repertoire to include various vehicles. For example, in Batman number 37 in 1946, the Joker makes another attempt to imitate Batman by creating the Joker gyro to mimic Batman's Batplane and the Joker Mobile, his version of the Batmobile, which was bulletproof as well as being armed with machine guns. 
that also had the ability to lay down planks that allowed the car to pass over open spaces, and both of these vehicles prominently feature the Joker's face on the front of them. However, this would be the only appearance of the Joker gyro that I could find, but the Joker mobile would appear several more times throughout the years, although it would be redesigned twice. Now the Joker's gadgetry has also been heavily featured in his various video game depictions. Joker's character in Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe includes his various extendable boxing glove arm and razor sharp playing cards along with a bomb and a revolver. Likewise, during Injustice Gods Among Us, the Joker incorporates his acid shooting lapel flower, laughing gas, exploding chattering teeth and a crowbar, a nod to the weapon the Joker used to maim the second Robin, Jason Todd, in the Death of the Family story arc by Jim Starlin in 1988 and 1989. Furthermore, the Arkham series of games adds x-ray glasses to the Joker's array of gadgets, as well as including the Joker teeth and Joker venom, although it is referred to variously as Smilex, Joker Toxin, or Happy Gas. That said, in recent years, the Joker has been depicted as a darker and more deranged character and as such, has resorted to using more conventional and violent weapons instead of those based around jokes and pranks. For instance, the Joker's characterization in the 2008 film The Dark Knight sees the Joker as he's portrayed by Heath Ledger depicted as a murderous psychopath that uses conventional weapons such as grenades and bombs, as well as conventional items like pencils and razor blades to inflict harm and even kill his victims. Whether the version of the Joker portrayed by Jared Leto in Suicide Squad will incorporate any of these traditional gadgets into his character remains to be seen, although trailers indicate that this version of the Joker will exhibit at least some of the sadistic tendencies that have become a hallmark of his more recent characterization. With that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end, and what I want to do here is I want to pose a question to you guys. If you guys could defeat Batman using any one of the Joker's gadgets, which gadget would it be? And I will catch you guys later. Peace.